Hello, and welcome to my first ever art video. Uh, this is Jason, and uh, today I'm going to be drawing a little idea that I had a few days ago. I apologize in advance for how jankety this video is. You guys can't really see my camera rig, but it is very... Uh, very sad, <laughs> very thrown together. Um, hope you guys will find this video interesting. It's uh, mainly just going to be about my process for making art. Uh, this little book that I'm looking through here is just one of my many notebooks that I carry around. And today, the thing that I want to work on is this little teeny giraffe right here um, as part of an ongoing art series that I'm doing uh, about animals and the environment <clears throat> excuse me uh, so my first step that I like to do is obviously thumbnail an idea um, again I apologize I'm going to be digging around for things in my studio because I've just moved into a new house and I don't know where anything is yet. But a little thumbnail sketch like this is usually my first step. So uh, having already done that, um, where we're really jumping in here is, is really my second step of fleshing out that idea. So uh, here goes, I'm going to basically work on some larger versions of this play around with the composition and some other pre-planning kind of works. So probably won't talk too much while I'm working on this. Um, so just uh, just enjoy and I'll be back with you guys in a little while. Uh, hello and welcome back. Uh, it's a good thing I took that break because I now realized I spent most of the last video completely drawing outside of the frame. You guys can't see jack squat. So I'm going to correct that using this really high-tech blue tape here. Like when I said this is my first video and I'm a total noob, I was not kidding. Like not even a little bit. So, giving myself a little visual cue here as to how much you guys can see and can't see. That way, when I'm working, you guys will actually be able to know what I'm doing. Instead of guessing and just listening to me talk. So this was the drawing that I completed uh, at the end of the last segment. and. Um, this, which I realize is most of what you guys couldn't see, was the whole warm up drawings. Looking at giraffe, general shape, a little bit of anatomy. Here's what I did with running. A um, few heads over here. Uh, this is the most important drawing on this page, this kind of silhouette, and to a lesser extent, this one. Uh, although it's facing that way, I really want it to go that way. Um, you know, these are the these are the two that I'm really looking at on uh, on this page. So at this stage, I would consider my warm up complete, and now I'm going to start actually working away from uh, away from the specific reference videos, or, or I should say images. Uh, next step of this project is going to be, um, it's going to be me just moving away from pictures of drafts and working more on the actual art that, uh, the actual piece of art that I want to make. So, uh, I definitely need to do a little more trial and error on the aesthetics of the piece. The dimensions I need to determine uh, and start thinking about 
how I'm going to build this image from drawings like this, and uh, we will get into some computer work later as well. So, let me get something, anything that is rectangle. Seems pretty good. Uh, when it comes to compositional elements, I really like to, you know, draw a miniature piece of paper and think of this, this is, is what my drawing is going to be. Um, so it's really, it's a little bit like this, except it's bigger. Uh, and this will help me to kind of refine uh, the overall aesthetic, the balance of the different components of the drawing, which really in this drawing it's, it's really just a giraffe. There's not going to be much in the way of a background. Um, but still, that's, that's somewhat important. And, um, you know, I'm really thinking about the big picture aspects of creating a piece of art. I'm not worried about the details uh, quite yet. So here goes. So part of thinking about this is really just a basic shape like this and its relationship to the edge of the art. Um, you know, in this example, I'm really thinking I might want to make it a little more narrow, like something like that. Might fit that giraffe a little better. Somewhat depends on how I do his feet. I have this really bad habit of drawing animals and people and not drawing their feet. <laughs> kind of a leftover um, bad habit from when I started drawing as a kid. Uh, but that looks pretty good. It's not my only choice. Um, I can always explore kind of other options. Make sure you guys can see that. Um, you know, I could do... Sort of the giraffe. I don't know. He could be in a field, you know. It could be like Africa, but I, I really don't want. I really don't want that sort of typical image. And this is really not about. It's really not about the giraffe's environment. It's about the giraffe. It's about the actual animal. I mean, I understand those things are related, but as far as the imagery goes. It's it's more the animal than the environment. But we'll play around. We'll see what else we could come up with here. I could try square composition. Um, they rarely work. I hate square compositions. Uh, sometimes they work if you have a square composition, but you kind of ignore that fact. If you embrace the square then you're in trouble. So maybe something something like that. I think maybe we'll see a little bit of the ground. Maybe just where he stands we'll see the ground. Actually that's not bad. One of the things about squares is um, if you draw lines like this across the square you're gonna naturally get your eye drawn to the center of the square and in the case of this thumbnail, that's the giraffe's butt. That's not really what I'm going for here. So that's really not going to work. I have some other aesthetic uh, little patterns and things that I adhere to that I think uh, really help the aesthetics. I probably won't get into that stuff too deeply because it's a rabbit hole that some people really get lost in and is not really that valuable. You know, at the end of the day, 
the best thing you can do is look at it and say, that's pleasing to my eye. That has good positive and negative space. These things you just know when you look at it, and you can tell at this level. So never draw to this level and then look back and go, oh, the aesthetics are wrong. Get it right here, or at least get close. <coughs> Also helps I find just to. I don't know why I'm using all this other stuff. I'm not using a ruler. There we go. Sometimes it's 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 just helpful to use just different size uh, rectangles and whatnot for your art. Just kind of draw at different sizes. That's something that nobody ever tells you, uh, and it's fairly important. So this is a really tall composition, which might work pretty well, and I could. I could maybe even kind of exaggerate the tallness of the giraffe. Giraffe front legs are so weird. They're so weird. But that's what makes them giraffes. So there's that really rigid at attention kind of thing. I don't normally erase at this stage, it's kind of a waste of time, but if I cheat that line over, if we go with a straight line, I really want this to be a straight line. If we can make that a straight line and still make this look like a giraffe, then I'm going to be happier than I would otherwise have been. And that and that's pretty decent, actually. I like that better than this one. Better than that, better than that. I mean, honestly, I could sit here and do 20 of these, and I will probably come back to this one. But it's good. It's good to do that diligence. It's good to work big and small until you find one that works. I mean, in a lot of ways, this original doodle is better than that. And that's what's good to refer back to what you've already done um, and say, am I, am, I, am, I, am I following the right path or am I off in the wilderness doing something different? Think about this one. This one is really, really cartoony. And that happens because when I draw small little things, that, that's how big it is. Here's my thumb. That's how big that drawing is. When I draw little stuff like this, it tends to be very cartoony. Maybe I just need to embrace that. I don't know. Let's let's explore. Let's explore. I obviously didn't know what a giraffe looked like when I drew this because I kind of gave it a cow's body or something. But maybe that can work. I'm literally I'm copying. I'm copying now to see if I still want to do that. Fat body and a humongous head. Humongous head. Hmm. This or this? Yeah, I like this better. I do this, by the way. I put check marks by the ones I like. I don't like this. I don't like. I don't, I don't like this. I don't like this. I'm on the fence about about, about this one. I'm on the fence about this one. Got to keep going. Let's see what else we got. Any more rectangles? Oh, here's my little ruler. Sorry, I know it's really noisy. I don't have a decent microphone at all. Maybe I can get one in the future if I keep doing this, but right now I just gotta use what I have laying around. So I'm sure you pick up every single noise that happens in my studio. The air conditioner's running right now. I don't know if you guys can hear that or not. Uh, it was raining a few minutes ago. If it rains again, you will definitely hear that because there is a metal roof on this house. So one thing about this again, I keep bringing this down. This body's basically way over here. So if I divide this, if I'm really going back to this, I can divide this, this away. Kind of look at where I place stuff. I have his body kind of here. And it's a big square, totally unrealistic body. But the more I look at it, the more I like it. His neck goes up, it's not perfectly straight, but it's mostly straight. And then up here, all about the head. And I kind of have his 
I almost have them looking up, which in all the pictures I'm looking at, giraffes don't really do that much, but but maybe that will work here. Something like that. Does it still look like a giraffe? No, if it doesn't have this downward slope, it's not a giraffe. That is what makes a giraffe a silhouette, is this slope on the back and this weird little weird little hump thing they have back there. And what's also nice about this is if I bring the body in, I can kick these legs back out like they seem to do in all pictures. Very, very strange. Let me go back. My, my reference material here. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 not that. Okay. Sorry, I, I literally don't have places to put things, so throwing stuff on the floor now. Okay. Um. I'm getting desperate now. I'm really, really trying to copy this magical little thing. This little drawing has just some charm to it that I can't seem to get back. to drawing dragons again. That neck is really skinny I drew. That's interesting. Yeah. I don't think I need this little bump. I think that head should be more like a triangle. I think that's gonna read more. If I'm gonna go more cartoony you have to get the shapes right. You've just got to or it'll get lost. You won't know what you're looking at. Oh, oops. That's better. I like that better. I kind of, um, I don't know why I'm drawing behind the other drawing. It's like it's a crowd of giraffes. Thanks for watching this first part of the video, guys. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, this drawing project is going to take a couple hours, so uh, even even cutting that down into a YouTube video, it's still going to be probably a couple videos. So the next segment will be a little more drawing, a little more preparing for the inking stage. So I hope you will uh, tune back in for that. Thanks very much. I hope you enjoyed it.